In the ancient land of Canaan, we find the compelling Bible story of Joseph, a young man favored by his father and given a colorful coat that set him apart. Born into a large family, Joseph's life is shaped by dreams and driven by jealousy from his brothers. This story follows Joseph from his early days in the fields to his rise to power in Egypt, showing us how he navigates through great challenges and injustices. From being thrown into a pit by his brothers to being imprisoned in Egypt, Joseph's journey is one of faith, forgiveness, and survival. As we delve into Joseph's life, we see a story of overcoming great odds, staying true to oneself, and finding redemption. This narrative not only tells the rise of a young man to greatness, but also explores deep themes of morality and resilience. Let's step back in time to explore this ancient story, where dreams shape futures, and a young man's strength and character are tested by life's trials. But just before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below on which story you'd like to hear next. Joseph was born in Haran, a place in Mesopotamia to his mom and dad, Jacob and Rachel. Joseph was born into a family of ten older brothers and one sister. His father, Jacob, had four wives, but Joseph was the firstborn of Rachel, the true love of Jacob's life. Sadly, Joseph's mother died when his younger brother Benjamin was born. When he was six, he and his family moved from Haran to Canaan, and later they made their home in Hebron. Jacob showed Joseph a lot of love because he was born when Jacob was old. He even gave Joseph a special coat of many colors. This coat symbolized favor. It set him apart from his brothers in a way they didn't appreciate. Who can blame them? Nobody likes to be the odd one out or the unfavored one. The most jealous of them all was the sons of Jacob's other wife, Leah. Their jealousy got worse when Joseph told them about two dreams he had. In the first dream, their bundles of wheat bowed to Joseph's bundle. In the second dream, Joseph saw the sun, moon, and eleven stars bowing to him, which represented his parents and brothers. When Joseph was seventeen, things reached a breaking point. One day, Jacob told Joseph to go to Shechem to see his brothers who were taking care of their sheep there. Jacob didn't realize that this would be the last time he'd see his beloved son until they met again, a whole 22 years later. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Joseph's brothers threw him into a pit when he wasn't expecting it. They initially wanted to leave him there to die, but after some time, they saw an Arab caravan passing by and decided to sell Joseph to them. This way, they could make some profit. Eventually, Joseph ended up in Egypt, where he was sold to Potiphar, who served as one of King Pharaoh's ministers. During his time working for Potiphar, Joseph had many important jobs dealing with money and trust. At the beginning, Joseph just worked in Potiphar's house. We're not sure exactly what he did, but when Potiphar saw that Joseph was good at what he did, he made him his personal steward and put him in charge of everything he owned. Things seemed to be looking up for him, but this did not last long. Potiphar's wife was attracted to Joseph because he was good-looking and wanted to be close to him. But Joseph always said no, which made her angry. One day, when nobody else was around, she tried to force him, but Joseph got away by leaving his coat behind and running outside. Because of his ability to control himself, people started calling him Joseph the Righteous, this woman harassed Joseph sexually when he was in a position where he couldn't easily say no. Even though she thought she had the right to do whatever she wanted because of her power over him, Joseph didn't want her advances. He had to work at home where she was, but he couldn't tell Potiphar about it without causing trouble in their marriage. But Potiphar's wife turned the tables on Joseph, telling her husband that it was Joseph who had tried to entice her. The angry master reacted by placing his trustworthy assistant in prison. This prison was not the worst place to stay. It was for criminals of upper society, so to speak. Even in prison, Joseph's charm helped him, and the warden made him his top helper. 
During his time in prison, Joseph sees the king's cub bearer and baker looking sad. He asks them what's bothering them, and they explain that they had dreams but don't know what they mean. Joseph offers to help and tells them to share their dreams with him. In the first dream, there's a vine with three branches, and it grows grapes. The cupbearer in the dream squeezes the grapes into Pharaoh's cup and gives it to him. Joseph understands the dream. In three days, the cupbearer will return to his important job with Pharaoh. It's good news for the cupbearer. He'll leave prison in three days. But Joseph has more to say. He says he's innocent. He remembers being taken away forcefully and then falsely accused and arrested. He was once in a pit, sold as a slave, and now he's in another pit. Prison is no fun. It's like a hole. He hopes the cub bearer will tell Pharaoh about his case, hoping for justice. The baker feels hopeful when Joseph explains the cub bearer's dream, but soon learns his own fate isn't so good. In his dream, three baskets on his head also mean three days. But while the top basket holds tasty food, it's eaten by birds. Just like the cub bearer gets his job back, the baker will also have his head lifted, but in a bad way. He'll be hanged, and birds will eat his body. For an Egyptian, this is shameful, as they usually mummify important people for burial, not let birds eat them. On the third day, Pharaoh celebrates his birthday. It's a happy day for the chief cub bearer as he gets his job back, but a sad day for the chief baker, who is executed by hanging. Joseph might have hoped the cub bearer would tell Pharaoh about him, and he'd be freed soon. But as days passed, it became clear his situation wouldn't improve so quickly. This was a test of faith, a challenge to trust in God's care. After two years, King Pharaoh had two dreams that none of his advisors could explain. The cub bearer remembered Joseph and suggested bringing him to interpret the dreams. Joseph, who was now 30, explained that the dreams meant seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. He advised Pharaoh to store grain during the good years. Impressed by Joseph's wisdom, Pharaoh made him second in command, in charge of preparing for the famine. When the famine started, it hit Canaan hard. Joseph's brothers heard there was food in Egypt, so they went there to buy some from the viceroy, not knowing it was their own brother. Joseph saw a chance to check if his brothers were really sorry for selling him. He accuses them of being spies, suggesting they've come to exploit any weaknesses in their country. The brothers deny being spies, insisting they are honest men and revealing they were originally twelve brothers, but one is no longer alive and the youngest is with their father at home. Joseph feigns disbelief keeping Simeon in prison while allowing the others to return home with food. However, he instructs them that when they return, they must bring their youngest brother with them. Upon returning to Canaan, the brothers recount the events to their father Jacob, who was deeply distressed when he learned of Joseph's disappearance and now Simeon's absence. Reluctantly, Jacob refuses to let Benjamin, his youngest son, accompany them to Egypt, fearing for his safety. However, as their provisions reduce, Jacob is compelled to send them back to Egypt with Benjamin to procure more food. Upon their return to Egypt, Joseph is overjoyed to see his younger brother, Benjamin. Unknown to them, Joseph, now a high-ranking official, devises a plan to test his ten half-brothers. Joseph instructs his servants to fill their bags with food, secretly slipping his silver cup into Benjamin's bag. As the brothers depart and travel a short distance, Joseph sends his servants to intercept them. Accusing them of theft, the servants confront the brothers, who completely deny any wrongdoing, even offering to kill anyone the cup is found among. The servants discover the cup in Benjamin's bag, leading them to insist that Benjamin remain with them while allowing the others to return home. Reluctantly, the ten half-brothers accompany Benjamin back to Joseph's house, where Joseph announces that they are free to leave, but Benjamin must stay as his slave. Judah, one of Joseph's brothers, now speaks up. 
He explains that if they go back home without the boy, their father will die because he loves him very much. So please keep me here as your slave, but let the boy go home. When he saw how much they cared for Benjamin, Joseph could no longer control his feelings. He dismisses his servants and reveals his true identity to his surprised brothers who are unable to speak out of fear. Joseph reassures them, urging them to approach him, and then declares himself as their long-lost brother whom they had sold into slavery. In a compassionate tone, Joseph consoles his brothers, explaining that it was not their fault but part of God's plan for him to come to Egypt and save lives. He shares how Pharaoh has appointed him as the ruler of Egypt and instructs them to hasten back to their father with the news and to bring him and their families to Egypt to live. Embracing his brothers warmly, Joseph expresses his love by hugging and kissing each one of them. Upon hearing of Joseph's brother's arrival, Pharaoh offers them wagons to bring their father and their families to Egypt, promising to provide them with the best land in the country. Filled with gratitude and relief, Joseph's brothers follow his instructions and return to Canaan to bring their father and their families to their newfound home in Egypt. Once Pharaoh made Joseph the viceroy, he also gave him a wife named Asenath. She was Potiphar's daughter, who was a priest in On. Some say that Potiphar was actually Potiphar, who was Joseph's old master. Joseph and Asenath were blessed with two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, born during the good years when there was plenty of food. After these events, Joseph learned that his father was ill. He took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, to visit him. Jacob, hearing that Joseph was coming, gathered his strength and sat up in bed. Jacob recounted to Joseph how God appeared to him in Canaan and promised to make his descendants numerous and give them the land. When Jacob saw Joseph's sons, he asked who they were, and Joseph explained that they were his sons, given to him by God. Jacob asked to bless them, and although his eyesight was failing due to old age, he embraced and kissed them. He expressed gratitude to see Joseph's offspring. Joseph positioned his sons for the blessing, but Jacob crossed his hands, placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, the younger son, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, the firstborn. Joseph tried to correct him, but Jacob insisted that Ephraim would be greater. Jacob blessed them both, stating that people would use their names to bless others. He also prophesied that God would be with Joseph and bring his descendants back to the land of their ancestors. Jacob granted Joseph an additional portion of land as a gift. Joseph was in charge of Egypt for a long time, a whole 80 years, until he passed away at 110 years old. Before he died, he asked his brothers to promise to take his coffin with them when they left Egypt for the land they were promised. After he died, they embalmed him and buried him in Egypt. Many years later, when the Jewish people left Egypt, Moses made sure to find Joseph's tomb and bring his body to the land of Israel. After Joseph passed away, he was buried in Shechem, which is called Nablus now. People still visit his grave there even today. As we close the story of Joseph, we leave behind the ancient sands of Egypt, carrying the story of a man who overcame great challenges and made a big difference in a nation. Joseph's life, filled with tough times and great successes, shows us how staying strong and keeping faith can lead to unexpected good outcomes. From his difficult days in the pit and the prison to his rise to power in Egypt, Joseph stayed true to his dreams and values. His story teaches us about the importance of forgiveness and staying true to ourselves. What do you think about the story of Joseph? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating content about the incredible stories we find in the Bible.